The annual dance marathon was held this weekend. Hear from students and why they participated next. And severe weather season is upon us. We have details on how you can be safe and prepared when severe weather strikes. And we have actual spring-like temperatures on the way. Tune in next to find out when they will pay us a visit. We have that and more. This edition of The Shield starts right now. Live from the VU TV studio in Schnabel Hall, on the campus of Valparaiso University. This is The Shield on VU TV. Thank you for joining us on The Shield. I'm Blake Harms. And I'm John Hammersmith. Dancing for kids who can't. That's what many students did this weekend at the annual dance marathon to raise money for Lori's Children's Hospital. We sent Jace Allen out to the dance marathon to hear from students why they chose to participate this year. As a nursing student, I find the cause to be really important and relative to my career, so I'm here to support that. I'm participating in Dance Marathon because the cause is just super important to me and I wanted to do anything I could to like raise money and help out with it. I'm doing Dance Marathon because I think it's for a great cause and my friend Rachel is actually a miracle child, so I think that's super cool. I just think it's a great cause to raise money for and it's such a fun way to do it and I just really wanted to get involved in like philanthropy so this has been a really fun way to do it. Dance Marathon is one of the most popular events on campus bringing in tens of thousands of dollars every year. This year's total was $70,075.06. Earth Day is in just a few weeks and the new Office of Sustainability will be putting its very first event on to celebrate this day. On April 19th many student and community organizations will be gathering on the West lawn from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. to promote their showcase their con contributions to the environment. If it is raining that day, the event's location will be moved to the Ark. The Earth Day celebration is free for all students and will have live entertainment along with music and giveaways. It's football season, but not the type involving people. This is robotic football season. We sent Heather Bricka out to see the Valparaiso University robotics team to see what they have in store for the upcoming robotic football tournament in Ohio. Valparaiso robotic football team is getting their robots fixed, their team prepped, and all ready for the Ohio tournament in the next two weeks. They played a practice game against the alumni in order to get their robots polished for the tournament. I think today's game was really good. It was a good practice and we were able to see what we need to work on. I think we did a fantastic job. Me personally, I did pretty well. I was happy about the game. Oh, we did really well. Uh, we definitely uh, played better than we thought we would. I talked with the robotic football team right after the game to see what their plan is heading forward. We have a few technical things to work out, especially with our IR, um, which are infrared for our quarterback, but we also need to work um, our offense needs a little bit of practicing to improve. And we do. We need to uh, prep and make uh, more aggressive attacks and more that defensive lines. We uh, had to struggle with some technical issues, but I think we're going to be looking pretty good heading into our uh, tournament in two weeks. Are you a business, science, or economics major looking to join a network of people who share the same passion as you? Delta Sigma Pi just might be the place for you. VUTV had the privilege to sit down with Delta Sigma Pi President Jacqueline Delorto to find out more about Valpo's business fraternity. So Delta Sigma Pi is a co-ed professional fraternity. Uh, we are open to business, economics, and actuarial science majors as well as faculty and staff in those departments. We focus on um, brotherhood, uh, social events, um, professional events as well as community service events. What makes us unique I think is just like this community feel that we kind of bring um, or that we like really work on on like a semesterly basis is just we want everyone to be welcome to feel welcome. I actually um, was recruited my first semester freshman year and since then I've seen so much growth like we've grown in numbers as well as just in like passion and I think ambition of the different events that we want to do and the ways that we want to be involved um, and for me that's been like the most rewarding and I guess the most meaningful part of it um, and so like I want to be that alumni that comes back like in three or four years and sees that like this chapter has continued to grow and I think for me that would be 
outstanding. So we have recruitment in um, the fall and the spring um, and that's open to um, all year. So freshmen um, in the fall can um, come out to our recruitment. The number one reason um, to consider Delta Sigma Pi is just the opportunities um, for growth in both personal and professional development, um, as well as just the connections that you can make, um, networking opportunities. Um, and it's just a great group of people to be around and it really enhances your undergraduate experience. Delta Sigma Pi is a great opportunity to build connections with other students and alumni, as well as network with future employers. If you are interested in joining Delta Sigma Pi, re recruitment begins in fall of next school year. And with severe weather season approaching, there's a chance you'll find yourself outside when the sirens sound. Are you prepared? Meteorologist Sabrina Bates explains how to stay safe. Imagine playing at the park with your kids, and then you hear. It's a mild spring day, but the skies have turned gray. What do you do? Probably go to that house over there and knock on the door, honestly. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd have to go to the closest house. Even little kids know what to do if severe weather strikes. You should go inside. It's a different story, though, when the public park doesn't have an indoor shelter. The National Weather Service states that you want to avoid tall objects, bodies of water, and open fields. I visited my local park to see if I can find a place to protect myself, and it was actually pretty hard to find. Once you find your lowest line area, you want to get to it as soon as possible. Now, it may be a bit dirty, but your safety is the biggest concern. You don't want to be on your knees. You want to actually get down on your stomach, put your hands over your head, and wait until the storm passes. While it's best to get in, get down, and cover up, we don't always have that option. We live in tornado alleys, so you have to be prepared. One of your best bets is to keep your phone handy on you throughout the day, checking weather updates on weather apps. One of my favorite to use is Radar Scope. It's easy for anyone to use. Just open it up, and you see right here if severe weather is headed your way. It doesn't hurt to be extra cautious. Have a severe weather plan in place for at home and outside. Reporting for VU TV, I'm Sabrina Bates. And even though the calendar may say it's spring, it definitely didn't look like it this morning. The dusting of snow we got overnight certainly doesn't help that cause. We have meteorologist John Hammersmith in the studio today. John, everyone in Northwest Indiana is wondering when is the spring-like weather going to arrive? Well, we may see a little dose of spring-like temperatures and some rain showers as we head to the end of this week and into the next weekend. But as far as right now, we're sitting at 38 degrees with that north-northwest wind of 6 miles per hour. And as far as radar right now, we are pretty clear. There might be a few little scattered rain showers hanging around, but they're not going to amount to a whole lot. And they should diminish as we head into the evening hours. As far as your evening planner goes, though, at 7 o'clock, we'll be at 36 degrees. Clouds are still going to be hanging around. And then as we get to 9 and 11, temperatures are going to dip down to around that freezing line. And there's that 20% chance of precip that I was telling you about. And with temperatures being around that freezing line, if you're going out on the roads, make sure you are careful looking for some slick spots. Now, as far as right now, again, we are at 38 degrees and we're gonna continue to see temperatures lingering in the lower 30s as we head into the overnight hours. Thanks, John. President Trump announced on Thursday the possibility of increasing tariffs on Chinese goods. Hear the concern about this from farmers coming up. And on Friday, a bus carrying a Canadian hockey team crashed. We have updates on this tragic event next. In a world where entertainment is at risk, one man is given a mission, but he is about to face his biggest challenge yet. He will race against the clock 
and open doors to new possibilities that will save weekends as we know it. What are you doing? I'm looking for free movies. Oh, I'll help you with that. Just go to movies.valpo.edu. They have all the best movies, including The Hobbit and 22 Jump Street. Whoa, it's that easy? It's that easy. Grab some popcorn, grab some buddies, and watch movies.valpo.edu's great selection. Thursday night, President Trump announced a possible $100 billion of additional tariffs against Chinese goods. That's after $50 billion of proposed tariffs came out on Tuesday. He cites concerns with China stealing American intellectual property. But Natasha Chen explains why retailers and farmers alike are worried about what this will cost Americans. President Donald Trump says China hasn't been playing fair. The easiest thing for me to do would be just to close my eyes and forget it. If I did that, I'm not doing my job. In a radio interview with WABC Friday morning, Trump defended his announcement Thursday night that the U.S. should consider another $100 billion in tariffs against Chinese goods. That's after U.S. tariffs were already imposed on Chinese steel and aluminum earlier this year. China fought back, targeting U.S. fruits, nuts, wine and steel pipes. Then on Tuesday, President Trump threatened to levy import taxes on 1,300 Chinese products, including TVs, dishwashers and printers. Hours later, China fired back with an equal amount of tariffs on U.S. cars, planes and soybeans. The market price of soybeans dropped 40 cents this morning. American farmers, American soybean producers are down 1.6 to 1.7 billion dollars today. Yes, we feel like a casualty. The Secretary of Agriculture is aggressively working out plans to assist any American farmers uh, that are threatened by these actions. Now with the potential new tariffs, no one knows which U.S. exports could be hit next with Chinese taxes. The U.S. National Retail Federation accused Trump of playing a game of chicken with the nation's economy. I'm not saying there won't be a little pain, but the market's gone up 40 percent, 42 percent, so we might lose a little bit of it. But we're going to have a much stronger country when we're finished. In Washington, I'm Natasha Chen reporting. Texas National Guard troops began deployment Friday to the state's border with Mexico. The action comes in the wake of President Trump's memorandum that aims to provide more U.S. border security. With the authorization and under the authority of Governor Abbott, this deployment has begun with the movement of equipment and troops today. Within 72 hours, the Texas Military Department will have 250 personnel, along with ground surveillance vehicles, as well as light and medium aviation platforms. This initial phase of deployment will include command and control, coordination cells, and operational planning as requested in support of the federal entities already on the border. Follow-on forces will move to the border once mission requirements and locations are finalized. Brigadier General Tracy Norris says by the end of the weekend, at least 250 of its National Guard troops will be alone the Texas-Mexico border. This adds to the 100 Texas Guard troops already there by virtue of an earlier directive from the governor. President Trump's memorandum states U.S. security is at risk because of a spike in illegal border activity. Mr. Trump said Thursday he was considering sending a total of two to 4,000 National Guard troops to the border with Mexico. The death toll from Friday's bus crash in Canada has gone up to 15. Police in Saskatchewan province originally said that 14 people were killed, but they released an update on Saturday afternoon. A bus carrying the Humboldt Broncos junior hockey team collided with a semi-truck. The team president spoke on Thursday, on th Saturday. On behalf of the entire Broncos family, our deepest sympathies go out to the injured and the deceased and of course all their loved ones. We are heartbroken and completely devastated by the tragedy that occurred yesterday. Our eternal gratitude goes out to the Humboldt and Nipawin Fire Departments and paramedics, the RCMP emergency services crews and witnesses for their selfless acts of bravery while trying to help those in need. 
Plot twist for Stranger Things. The creators will have to defend the originality of the series in court. Filmmaker Charlie Kessler is suing Matt and Ross Duffer, stating the brothers crafted the show around his idea. Kessler says he discussed the plot of his short film, Montauk, with the Duffers during a film festival premiere party in 2014. Montauk is about a violent event in New England town surrounded by secret government projects and the paranormal. Kessler said he didn't know about similarities between his own work and Stranger Things until the series premiered on Netflix in 2016. He is seeking monetary damages for breach of implied contract. The Duffer brothers have not requested, responded to CNN's request for comment. Well, coming up after the break, John has your full forecast. Plus, we have a breakdown of the past week's Crusader sports. Stick with us. Well, I think that's all we need. Thank you so much for coming in. We'll be in touch. Okay, this is it. Just shake his hand and walk out with your head held high. Don't mess this up. Thank you. Don't let a bad handshake get in the way of getting the job you want. Find out more at the Career Center. It's definitely felt like a winter-like day today with temperatures in the 30s and 40s. Right now, we're at 38 degrees here in Valparaiso, 37 in South Bend, and 35 in Chicago. And as we step out your evening, we're going to cool down to right around that freezing line. By 7 o'clock, we'll be at 36, and by 9 and 11, we'll be at 31 and 32. Now, we're gonna, I'm leaving a 20% chance for some precip tonight. So if you are going out on the roadways, make sure you are noticing or slick spots that way you are safe. Now, continuing into the temperatures, tomorrow we're gonna to see high temperatures in the mid 40s. And notice out here in the plains, you're gonna to start to see some of those greens and yellows start to really push their way into our area on Wednesday and then again on Thursday. High temperatures on Wednesday are gonna be in the lower 60s. And now we even got some oranges and reds starting to make appearance in the plains. Now, as far as radar goes, this is eight o'clock tonight. We're gonna have a couple little lingering flurries hanging around, but they're not gonna amount to a whole lot. And then as we go through the overnight hours for your morning commute tomorrow, we're gonna clear out and we may see a little bit of sunshine throughout the day tomorrow, which is gonna be a good change of pace compared to today. But that won't last too long. By nine o'clock tomorrow, we're gonna have some clouds starting to build in. We can't rule out a spotty little rain shower or two as we go throughout the evening and overnight hours tomorrow and into Wednesday, and then we'll have clouds start to build back in as we hit the early morning hours for your Wednesday morning. Now, as far as tonight, there's that low temperature of 27 degrees with that calm north wind, and then there's that high temperature tomorrow in the mid 40s. The winds are gonna be a little bit more gusty at about 10 to 15 miles per hour out of the west. Now, here's your little surprise for you. As we get into the end of this week, look at Thursday and Friday, there's those high temperatures in the lower to mid 70s, which is gonna be a great change of pace compared to the winter-like temperatures we've been dealing with for essentially this whole winter and early spring. Now with those uh, spring-like temperatures, we're gonna be dealing with some spring-like weather on Friday and Saturday with those temperatures in the 70s. We're gonna have some more moisture pushing up from the Gulf and that could provoke maybe a severe thunderstorm or two on Friday and Saturday. And then we'll be cooling back off into the 50s and 40s next Sunday and Monday. And it's really going to be a welcome sight for many people of Northwest Indiana who woke up to snow this morning. They're sick of this um, 
cool weather. So I'm sure they're curious as to why is this happening? Why are we getting these spring-like temperatures so abruptly? Absolutely. So kind of how the upper levels are setting up, we're going to have a lot of influence from the south-southwest, and that brings up some of that gulf moisture and those warmer temperatures. We call it warm air advection. And when you get that, you get some rising motion, and that's what's going to allow some thunderstorm development as we head into Friday and Saturday. From snow to thunder in less than a week. From snow to thunder, yep. What a Absolutely. crazy transition. It is crazy. All right. Well, thanks, John. After the break, we'll have a full breakdown of this past week's Crusader Sports. Well, let's start with our Valpo men's baseball team, who struggled in their second conference series of the season this past weekend. The Crusaders traveled to Carbondale, Illinois, to take on the Southern Illinois Salukis in a three-game series. The first game on Friday was held scoreless until the fifth inning, when SIU put up their first run. They would go on to score another three runs the following inning and two more in the eighth, all while the Crusaders were held scoreless. Sam Shaquin sent himself and Chase Dawson around the bases with a two-run homer in the bottom of the ninth, although that would not be enough to power over the Salukis with a final score of 2-6. But Valpo came out swinging the following afternoon with their first run coming in the top of the first inning, courtesy of Sam Shaquin. The following inning, the Salukis found their first score in a two-run homer, but the Crusaders heated up in the fifth inning, scoring four runs. The only other score in the game also came from the Crusaders, and that was in the eighth inning. The final score was 6-2, although this time it was Valpo who found themselves on the higher end of the tally. And things took a turn for a worse on Sunday when the Crusaders took on SIU a third time. SIU quickly took control of the then scoreless game in the fifth inning, putting up seven runs, including an additional run in the eighth. Valpo would have no answers to their dominance as they fell to SIU with 8-0 as the final score. After hosting Milwaukee at Emory Bauer Field this Wednesday, the Crusaders will travel to Michigan State for a weekend series. Valpo's current record stands at 9-18. and Meanwhile, the women's softball team hosted UNI for a weekend series. Senior Kenzie Grossman pitched a complete game three-hitter to keep the Panthers quiet throughout the game. Valpo put up their two runs in the fifth inning, and that would turn out to be the only scoring of the game, as they found themselves on top with a final score of 2-0. However, the following two games didn't go quite as well. UNI found their rhythm in both games held at the Valpo softball complex on Sunday. Valpo would find themselves on the wrong side of the score, falling 0-5 and 3-7 in the afternoon doubleheader. After hosting Fort Wayne this Wednesday, the team will travel to Des Moines, Iowa to challenge Drake in a three-game series this weekend. Valpo's current record stands at 16-16. And, and the women's tennis team hosted their first Missouri Valley Conference match of the season, going up against Drake on Saturday. The Crusaders struggled throughout the event, eventually falling 0-7. They made the series against UNI on Sunday a little closer, but still found themselves on the bottom of a 3-4 final. The Crusaders will travel to Springfield, Missouri this weekend to face Missouri State before taking on St. Louis on Sunday. And in national sports, Patrick Reed held off Ricky Fowler and Jordan Speed to win the Masters. Kyle Busch took home the checkered flag in Sunday's NASCAR race at Texas. And the Chicago G Cubs home opener against the Pittsburgh Pirates has been postponed until tomorrow afternoon. And John, I know you're on the baseball team. I'm sure you're looking forward to that Big Ten matchup this weekend. Absolutely. It's always great to get to go and play some of those Big Ten teams like we played Purdue. But they're a great baseball team. And we've had some rocky games as far as this year, as far as pitching goes, really. Mm -hmm. Um, our hitting usually shows up about every game, but yeah. it's uh, hard to determine about that pitching sometimes, but we're looking forward to it. I know all the guys are excited about it, so it's going to be a good weekend. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully they can pull it off in East Lansing. Absolutely. That'd be a big win. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll have a final look at the weather coming up after the break.
TV, your campus, your story. Well, and right now we are dealing with a couple spotty showers, but nothing that's really amounting to a whole lot. We're going to really start to see those showers dissipate as we go into the evening hours. Now, as far as temperatures right now, we are in the upper 30s, and most of the region is in the upper 30s. A couple places in Illinois and down in southern Indiana, they're in the lower 40s. But as we go through tonight, we're really going to see those temperatures start to take a nosedive down into the lower 30s, even the upper 20s in some places and calm wind out of the north, but there is that 20% chance of some rain showers. And with our temperatures dipping down below that freezing line, make sure you are wary of some slick spots on the road. Now, as far as tomorrow goes, high temperature is going to be in the mid 40s. So with those high temperatures in the mid 40s and that west wind out of 10 to 15 miles per hour, it's going to feel a lot nicer than what we were dealing with today. Now here's our seven day forecast, which you can't really complain about seeing those high temperatures in the mid to lower 70s on Thursday and Friday. It's going to be a welcome sight, although it looks like maybe return to cooler temperatures. It kind of seems to be the trend this whole spring. We get a little warm and then the cooler temperatures uh, come back. Absolutely. And unfortunately, it's kind of been that way through most of the winter. And even if I remember right into the late fall, we were dealing with temperatures that were just below average. You know, they just kind of been lingering on and now winter's not letting us get into that spring like yeah. mode. All right. Thanks, John. For John and myself, thank you for watching. We'll see you next week on The Shield.